everyone, Dad Scott here, where in this video I want to talk about the prophecy of Daniel's 70th week. Because there are many who believe that all 70 weeks of Daniel have been fulfilled. Meaning that everything that's enumerated here in Daniel 9.24 have already been opened. And really, the purpose of this video is twofold. First of all, it's to show that, no, Daniel's prophecy is still obstructed and sealed which is contrary to the statement in the spurious book of Revelation stating, do not seal the words of the prophecy, where in fact we find dozens of references to the book of Daniel in this one book called Revelation. So was the prophecy of Daniel obstructed and sealed until the time of the ending, or is it not? Where the statement in the book of Revelation stating, do not seal the words of the prophecy, of this book scroll it, for the term is near, is contradictory to what is the context of the time of the ending, stated here in Daniel's prophecy, where this word term I speak about in my video, the term is near, demonstrating more problems with this one book, and what will or should bring to light the truth for those who are still in error, regarding whether the book of Revelation is what it purports to be, concerns the statement in Daniel surrounding what has to be accomplished according to the bringing in of the righteousness of the eons. Whereas a matter of fact, the words righteousness of the eons is only found here in Daniel 9.24. Nowhere else in the Old Testament are the words righteousness found in conjunction with the word eons, plural from the Hebrew noun olam, eons. And in order to understand that, yes, the prophecy of Daniel is still obstructed and sealed until the time of the ending, Daniel 12, 9, is to understand what eons are. Because the culmination of the 70 periods of seven involves the bringing in of the righteousness of the eons, not everlasting righteousness, but the righteousness concerning the eons, plural, which we'll see the righteousness here is in direct relationship to a new heavens and new earth, where righteousness down dwells. 2 Peter 3.13 And although I could go into great, great detail discussing what eons are, let me simply outline what an eon is. Let's go back to Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. We read, In the origin Elohim created the heavens and the earth land. We we'll first understand that the word of God reveals a threefold representation of heavens and earth land, which I discuss in my video, The Then World. And each representation also represents one eon, in accord with the word cosmos. And here the heavens and earth of Genesis 1-1 represents the then cosmos, through which the then cosmos being down flooded in water wholly loosened itself away. Hence Genesis chapter 1 verse 2. So here is the first representation of a heavens and earth out of old, where we read, but the heavens now present and the earth land are ones having been stored due to his word, being guarded for fire, not water as in Genesis 1-2, but fire, which in accord with the present heavens and earth is into fire, which will be at the altogether finishing of this present eon. And as we'll see, the word judgment here is quite relevant to everything that I'll discuss in this video. So here we see two representations of heavens and earth. There's the then cosmos of the heavens and earth out of old, which cosmos was an eon, and the now present heavens and earth land, which too is an eon, where when we jump down to 2 Peter 3.13, we read, but according to his promised things, we hope for a new heavens and a new earth land in which righteousness down dwells, which new heavens and new earth land will consist of yet another eon, the eon about to come. Ephesians 1.21, as well as Hebrews chapter 6, verse 5. So simply stated, the threefold representation of the heavens and earth, that of old, that of present, and that of future, 
are also according to a cosmos or eon of old, a cosmos and eon present, and a cosmos and eon future. So according to Genesis 1-3, when the light became until this very day, June 22nd, 2018, is the same heavens and earth. It's the same cosmos, the same eon, one eon, of which we are nearly 6,000 years into this present eon, the now present eon. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 10, Titus chapter 2, verse 12. And in the writ of the New Testament, we find two phrases, which one is from the downcast of the cosmos, where the other is before the downcast of the cosmos, where from is not before and before is not from. The statement from the downcast of the cosmos refers to what had occurred to the then cosmos, as read in Genesis chapter 1 verse 2. The chaos and discomposure was the downcast, that by water. So what about the before the downcast of the cosmos? Well, the context of the cosmos is the present cosmos. Before the present cosmos will be downcast, not in water, but fire. This is how we are to understand the context of these terms from the downcast of the cosmos and before the downcast of the cosmos. It's from the downcast of the then cosmos and it's before the downcast of the present cosmos. Where again, the cosmos now present is according to the eon now present. The cosmos that was then is according to that which was down flooded. Not in Noah's flood, but the flood described in Genesis 1-2, concerning an eon of a heavens and earth out of old, Genesis 1-1. So the prophecy concerning Daniel's 70th week here, and what it will accomplish, includes the bringing in of the righteousness of the eons, plural, which is accounting for the then cosmos and the now present cosmos of which the future eon, cosmos, heavens and earth, will be that where righteousness down dwells. 2 Peter 3.13, which in fact is the same exact context of Daniel chapter 9 verse 24, where in many verses we find the context of the glory into the eons of the eons. To him is the glory and the holding power into the eons of the eons. Not forever and ever, but into the eons of the eons, where the Greek word aeon should never be translated world, and it should never be translated eternity or eternal or forever and ever. These translations are very misleading and hide the vast context of what eons are which the Greek aeon, translated eon, occurs both in the singular and plural where we also find the adjective aeonios, properly translated eonian, that which accords with an eon or eons. The eonian judgment, Hebrew 6.2, accords with the same day of judgment that we previously talked about in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 7, where in verse 18, Peter also mentions the day of the eon. And the eonian judgment is the judgment that brings in the righteousness of the eons, again, according to Daniel's prophecy, on account of the altogether finishing of the eons. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 26. And this unique word translated altogether finishing here is from the Greek noun sun teleia, where sun is from the preposition denoting that which is intimately with, together with. Hence, altogether, where the word finish is from the Greek tileo. But here it's soon tileo, which must be translated in light of the preposition. And let me say this, that the altogether is referring to the completion of the Christ into the third day, third watch time day. And we see here that only the one out of six occurrences contains the plural eons. The rest are singular which singular has its context according to events of this present eon still yet to come, 
Hence, obstructed and sealed are the words of the prophecy until the time of the ending, to seal up vision and prophet, Acts 2, 17 and 18. Now, if you've watched many of my other videos, I've referenced Hebrews chapter 1, verse 8 many times, which eon of the eon is specific to the last three and a half years, or the third watch time, according to the same eonian judgment. So back to Daniel, we read, 70 periods of seven are appointed for your people, your people including under remnant Israel, okay, who are still asleep in the sepulchers, but who also will be resurrected in the last days. So the week remaining is still appointed for his people, which will see the context of Matthew chapter 24, Mark chapter 13, and Luke chapter 21 is also the context of which events are still impending, not yet fulfilled. So the 70 weeks of seven are appointed for your people, these people, Luke 21, 23, to block the transgression, to seal the faliances, and to cover over deviance, and to bring in righteousness of the eons. Let me repeat that, and to bring in righteousness of the eons at the altogether finishing of the present eon, according to the altogether finishing of the eons, the eon out of old and the present eon. And we also read, and to seal up visions and prophet, and to anoint the holy of the holy. So again, the eons, plural here, is a culmination of the transgression that had occurred in the then cosmos, where what had occurred in Genesis 1-2 was a judgment of that cosmos, where the judgment of the present cosmos is still impending. And what we see in the garden with the tree being of the knowledge of good and evil, with the serpent being, is the carryover of such evil in the realm of the spirit into the now present eon, which is termed an evil eon. Galatians chapter 1 verse 4. And if you want to understand the origin of evil, well, it did not originate in the now present eon, but the then cosmos. See my video, The Origin of Evil. So clearly we see that the context of Daniel's prophecy and the 70th week is not yet fulfilled. However, it will become so at the altogether finishing of this eon, into the time of the ending, the eonian and testifying time, of Hebrews chapter 1 verse 8. So the sealing up of vision and prophet, according to the last week of Daniel here, is completed in the third day, the third watch time day, which completes the work of the slaves according to Acts 2.18, where then the context of Acts chapter 2 verses 19 and 20 come in. So back to this term altogether finishing of the eon another proof that Daniel's prophecy indeed is not fulfilled is seen in the occurrence of Matthew 24, 3, where the learning ones were asking the Lord, what is the sign of your presence, your parousia, and of the altogether finishing of the eon? This present eon, where the specific sign here refers to that which will occur at the completion of the third watch time when the Lord comes according to the giving of wonders in the heavens and signs down coming on the earth land, blood, fire, vapor, blaze, which events lead into the curse of the Guiana fourth watch time, Eonian fire. And here in Matthew chapter 24, verse 15, in conjunction with the altogether finishing of the eon, well, Daniel is specifically named here. So Jesus is speaking to an audience who will resurrect, who will stand in the resurrection of the all, John chapter 5, verse 28 and 29, who have gone to their ending, as Daniel was told in Daniel 12, 13, but you go to your ending and you will repose, okay, die, and take stand towards your lot, towards the ending of the days. So these on the mount with Jesus asking him, what is the sign of your parousia? In the last days, they will stand in resurrection to be able to perceive what Jesus is instructing them that they may not be errorized in those days, according to the watch time and the hour of which the thief comes. See my video, What Kind of Hour? 
where as I stated in other videos, the context of this word desolation or that being made desolate is referring to the third watch time. And in the resurrection, many will stand to be among the sons and daughters who will prophesy, who will subsequently enter the wedding feasts at the half mark, the middle of the night where others locked out. And of course, those locked out in the middle of the night proceed into the third watch time who will make up the slaves, the female and men slaves, who too will be prophesying. Acts chapter 2 verse 18. And this is why Jesus states and perceive, okay? Perceive metaphysically, understand, I am with you all the days, okay? The days according to watch time days, till the altogether finishing of the eon. And in conjunction with the eonian judgment, Hebrews chapter 6 verse 2, we read in accord with from the downcast of the cosmos of Hebrews chapter 9 verse 26, Again, looking back to the then cosmos, on account of the altogether finishing of the eons into the repudiation of the phalians through his sacrifice, he has been revealed. Where in verse 27, the judgment is mentioned, okay? Where insomuch as it is laid away for the human to deaden away once, but after this, the judgment. Again, the Eonian judgment, the judgment pertaining to this entire eon that will wrap up at the altogether finishing of the present eon in bringing in the righteousness of the eons. Again, the eons concerning the then cosmos and the now present cosmos. And until the dead are resurrected, there is no judgment to be executed. Until Daniel will stand towards his lot, this eon has not yet been finished. Obviously, I mean, we're not living in a new heavens and a new earth where righteousness is down dwelling. No, the cosmos is quite corrupt and getting worse. And if you want to investigate more about resurrection orders pre-midnight, post-midnight, see my video, What Kind of Hour? Where we see the context of these resurrections in John chapter 5. When we read in John 5, 27, so he gave him also the judgment, this is referring to the Eonian judgment, to do authority since he is the son of the human, where the days as in the days of Noah are also according to the same days of the son of the human. Again, right back to Matthew chapter 24, verses 37 and 38, also seen in Luke chapter 17, verse 26. So this hour here that is said to come has not yet come because it states when all, all, okay, all here is all, all who are in the sepulchers hear on his voice, the voice of the son of the human, and those having done the good will go out into resurrection of life, including the men Jesus was speaking to in Matthew 24, including Daniel, including all Israel. Where I might add is the very context of Ezekiel's prophecy, chapter 37, namely concerning the sinews in the flesh coming back onto the bones, the revealed in flesh resurrection, 1 Timothy 3.16. And where the good go into towards life, the malicious into judgment. Where the very same context is what we read in Daniel chapter 12, verse 2. And many out of those sleeping in the Adama of the dust will wake up, these to the living ones of the eon, and these to revilements into the deterrence of the eon. And why it says many and not all is because the out-resurrection of Philippians 3.11, according to the mystery is preceding the resurrection of the all in the sepulchers. The all in the sepulchers leads into either those among the sober-minded virgins or the foolish in the middle of the night, the transition between second and third watch times, the half of Daniel's 70th week. And here in Daniel chapter 12, verse 3, is the context of those who will enter the wedding feasts in the middle of the night, into eon and testifying time. Where also let me explain something very profound. This phrase, eon and testifying time, is seen in Psalms chapter 45, verse 7, where we read, Your throne, Elohim, is eonian and for testifying time. 
a rod of the straightened is the rod of your regency. And here, Ionian, of course, is an adjective. And if this verse sounds familiar, well, it's because it's the same verse being quoted in Hebrews 1.8. But to the Son, he says, Your throne, O God, is into the eon of the eon, and the staff of the straightness is the staff of his regency. So in the Hebrew, where eonian or eon is from olam and testifying time from ad, in the Greek, they didn't have a word to translate ad as testifying time. So they simply translate it here as eon, okay, into the eon of the eon, which in Hebrew would be olam ad, testifying time. And the testifying is the same context of what will be occurring among the sons and daughters and the slaves who will prophesy in those days. So here in Hebrews 1.8, 1 one of these occurrences of eon is really from the Hebrew ad, translated testifying time in the Hebrew text. So is it possible that other occurrences of the word eon in the Greek are really speaking of the testifying time? Well, yes. The testifying time that's to come will encompass the prophesying of Acts chapter 2, verses 17 and 18. And when we read, But the one who blasphemes towards the Holy Spirit, as it were, not has he remission till into the eon, Mark 3, 29. Well, here I believe that the word eon is referring to the testifying time. According to those who will blaspheme the Holy Spirit, when God will be pouring out from his spirit upon all flesh in the last days, which testifying will be completed when Christ's body is completed at the altogether finishing of third watch time, when the holy of holy will be anointed. However, all who blaspheme against the Holy Spirit into the altogether finishing, they will be liable to what Jesus terms the Ionian failure. Mark chapter 3, verse 29, which is the curse of the fourth watch time where there is no bliss. So understand, one cannot blaspheme the Holy Spirit until the Holy Spirit is poured out upon all flesh in accord with the Ionian judgment, in accord with the last days, specifically the time of the ending of the last days where in the last days there will be plenty of opportunity for those to co-think and to like word the Son of God and to faith upon him when they stand before the Son of the human in resurrection among both the good and the malicious. So I hope that this video helps you to clarify that indeed the 70th week of Daniel has not been fulfilled. Daniel's prophecy is still presently obstructed and sealed till the time of the ending, which time of the ending is synonymous with the last days. And of course, my video channel being called The Revelation Deception, as I stated earlier, as I showed in the book of Revelation, that Daniel's prophecy is indeed obstructed and sealed until the time of the ending, until the time of the last days, and the bringing in the righteousness of the eons, should cause one to question the statement as read in the book of Revelation, chapter 22, verse 10. And he says to me, Do not seal the words of the prophecy, specifically stating this book scroll, for the term is near. Because if the term was near according to the not being sealed, 2,000 years ago, I might add, this would mean that the prophecy of Daniel, which this spurious epistle alludes or references dozens of times, would also be not sealed. So was the prophecy of Daniel opened up and fulfilled 2,000 years ago? Well, of course not. Think about it. Because this is just yet another proof that this one book called Revelation is not what it purports to be. See my playlist problems with the book of Revelation. So in closing, let me say that we need to begin heeding to the word of God, not to the words of human, because the spirits of the prophets are subordinated to the prophets, speaking in the writs. And how does one examine the spirits? Well, they have to understand what the writ says. 
so they can confirm for themselves if that one speaking the word of God is out of God, since many false prophets have come out into the cosmos. 1 John 4, 1. So in order to examine the spirits of human who speak the word, one must know what the word settings say, according to that which is God-spirited, of which books and commentaries published by human beings are not the word settings of God, that being the writ, the written word which we are to speak. So if anyone speaks, so be it as word settings of God. If anyone serves, so be it as out of strength, which the God does choir-like lead, so that due to all and everything, God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom is the glory and the holding power into the eons of the eons.